The World Health Organization, WHO, has declared COVID-19 a pandemic. COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019 and is caused by the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that are common in people and many different species of animals, including cats and bats. Common human coronavirus typically causes an upper respiratory tract infection, like the common cold. Most people get infected with one or more of these viruses at some point in their lives. The human coronavirus infection typically resolves on its own with basic rest while feeling miserable. Rarely, the coronaviruses that infect animals can evolve and become a new coronavirus, which then infect and spread between people. Important examples of these include Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, or SARS, in 2003, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, also known as MERS. In 2019, in Wuhan, a city in the Hubei province in China, noticed a number of unusual cases of pneumonia in the hospital. These patients most notably presented with clinical symptoms of dry cough, dyspnea, fever, and bilateral lung infiltrates on imaging. The coronavirus cases were eventually reported to the World Health Organization country office in China on the 31st of December 2019. Many of the cases were reported, and searches for the source have shown the Huanan Seafood Market, a wet market, as the origin. The market was where a large variety of vertebrate and invertebrate animals, wild caught and farm raised, are sold. On January 1st, said markets were closed. Furthermore, on January 12, 2020, China shares the genetic sequence of the novel coronavirus, which will be very important for the other countries as they develop specific diagnostic tests. By the end of January, the coronavirus was found to have originated from wild bats and belonged to the similar group as SARS. Hence, this coronavirus is also known as SARS coronavirus 2. By January 30th, the novel coronavirus outbreak was declared an emergency. On February the 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization announced that the official name of the disease would be COVID-19, a shortened version of Coronavirus Disease 2019. By March 11th, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. A pandemic is a global outbreak of a disease something not to be taken lightly. COVID-19 is a concern because it is highly transmissible. The number of cases are increasing at a rapid rate, and this is due to the virus being contagious, but also due to an increase in awareness and the availability of the diagnostic kits. As of March 15th, COVID-19 has affected more than 150,000 people worldwide and carries a mortality rate of around 3%. To put it into perspective, if you compare these figures to the other coronavirus outbreaks, for example, SARS in 2003 had just over 8,000 cases with a mortality rate of about 9.5%. And MERS in 2012 had a roughly 2,500 cases with a mortality rate of about 35%. Despite having a lower mortality rate than its predecessors, 3% is still very significant, especially with the rapidly growing number of cases. You can imagine for every 100 cases, three people may die. If we compare these statistics of coronavirus to the seasonal flu caused by the influenza virus, which affects millions each year, the mortality rate of the influenza seasonal flu is less than 0.2%. COVID-19 is caused by SARS coronavirus 2, a beta coronavirus. It is composed of a single-stranded ribonucleic acid, RNA. The virus targets and infects the respiratory system 
and is transmitted by contact, droplets, and fomites from another infected person who is symptomatic or even asymptomatic. The incubation period, the time from infection to appearance of symptoms, is about 2 to 14 days. The average age affected is 47 years old, and interestingly, children are rarely symptomatic. Both males and females are affected roughly equally. The classic symptoms of COVID-19 is a fever, dry cough, sore throat, and shortness of breath. These symptoms may progress and people may develop pneumonia and even acute respiratory distress syndrome, requiring intensive care. The mortality rate as mentioned for COVID-19 is 3% roughly. But this increases with age, especially for those above 60, but more significantly for those above 80 years of age. Mortality rate also increases with comorbidities such as diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease. Investigation findings of people infected with COVID-19 are lymphocytopenia, so low lymphocyte count in the blood, and CT chest in patients most commonly demonstrates ground glass opacification, consistent with viral pneumonia. Diagnosis of COVID-19 is made with PCR, identifying the COVID-19 viral RNA, the genetic material. The main treatment of COVID-19 is supportive care. At present, no effective treatment is available for COVID-19, and this includes antivirals, antibiotics, steroids, traditional medicine, and there is no vaccine. However, a randomized multicenter controlled clinical trials are underway looking at different treatment options as we speak. The coronavirus should not be confused with the influenza virus, which causes the seasonal flu. COVID-19 and influenza virus are very similar. They have similar presentations. That is, they both cause a respiratory disease, which presents as a wide range of illness from asymptomatic or mild through to severe disease and death. Secondly, both viruses are transmitted by contact, droplets, and fomites. As a result, the same public health measures, such as hand hygiene and good respiratory etiquette, are important actions all can take to prevent infection. The big difference between the viruses is that the influenza virus, which causes the seasonal flu, has a vaccine available yearly to help prevent and reduce the symptoms of flu, whereas the coronavirus have no available vaccine yet and only relies on the body's own immune system as defense. And that is why public health measures against COVID-19 is very important to help reduce the spread of the disease. You have probably seen this graph hovering the internet with the y-axis showing the number of cases and the x-axis of this graph is time. When a infectious outbreak such as COVID-19 hits, the number of cases will skyrocket and so too will the number of deaths when there are no public health measures in place. This spike shows us that many people are getting sick all at once. If that were to happen, there wouldn't be enough hospital beds or mechanical ventilators for everyone who needs them and your country's healthcare system will be overwhelmed and at capacity. That's already happening in Italy, for example. The goal of an infectious outbreak and what this graph will hopefully show you is the importance of flattening the curve. The idea is to increase social distancing in order to slow the spread of the virus so that you don't get a huge spike in the number of people getting sick all at once. There are a number of measures we can do to help flatten this curve. The first step is to help protect yourself. Wash your hands thoroughly for at least 20 seconds, especially after visiting public spaces. Avoid close contact with those who are sick, but also reduce human-to-human -human transmission by avoiding big social gatherings in case there is someone potentially sick there. 
Take steps to protect others by staying at home if you are sick. Isolation is recommended for at least a week and if concerned of COVID-19 to contact your doctor for potential diagnosis. Cover coughs and sneezes with tissues. Make sure to throw the tissue away and wash your hands. Wear a face mask if you are sick. You do not need to wear a face mask if you are not sick, unless you are caring for someone who is sick. Healthcare measures done by your doctor or the hospital are also important. These include rapidly identifying cases uh, with COVID-19, Isolating identified cases is important and to provide optimal treatment for those patients. Contact tracing by identifying people the infected person has been in contact with and then isolating individuals with suspected symptoms of COVID-19 and potentially diagnosing new cases again. And the cycle will continue. The development of a vaccine for COVID-19 is an urgent public health priority. You can now appreciate the importance of having the yearly vaccine against influenza, for example, which causes the seasonal flu. I hope you enjoyed this video on COVID-19, the summary. I guess the take-home message is that it's important to protect yourself, but also to protect others by applying those measures we just talked about. Stay safe and thank you.